Dungeon Machine. Ah, oh, Dungeon Machine. I've seen this the other day. On the Throw Machine. And it's a beautiful disaster. It shows you that Anime News Network is pure trash. And it has been trash, at least, since the Vic Mignano thing back in the day. They're extremely biased. Making Monsters Delicious with Delicious in Dungeon, Manga Creator, Ryo Kukui. Path of the Hills, also, I have to say it before we start. Spoiler alert, I guess. Spoiler alert. Then I'm gonna mention a couple of things that have not appeared in the anime, I'm pretty sure, so there's that. You have been warned. Out of the heels of its season 1 finale, Donjo Meshi captivated audiences with its ensemble casts, humorous chemistry, updating meals, and impressive world building. It's impressive to imagine everything from the series' magical ecosystem to its ever shifting dungeon was all brought to life by its manga creator, Ryoko Kui. Except for crime, picky eater, Kui's manga chapters are filled with meals brimming with equal parts warmth and horror. Lyos, Marcel, Hirochoku, and Isutsumi are just likely to gather around Senshi's walk to eat roasted red dragon meat as warm up succubus milk. Does that really happen in the manga? Hold up now. Are we getting too silly? Hmm. What are the ethics of the uh, of eating Parmet's balut? Is it vegan or is it veal? We sat down with Kui Sensei at Anime Expo 2024 to discuss the community of food, why Sensei is so sexy, see neurodivergence and layers, in layers and more. What a bunch of red flags. Already. I haven't read all of this, to be fair. I've skimmed a little bit. Kui Sensei, one of the primary themes of Delicious and Dungeon is building community. You shared meals. Could you share a meal or a recipe that is similar, similarly important to you? So I thought about your question a lot, but I couldn't come up with anything special. But one thing is, my mother used to say, like when we make okonomiyaki, she advised me to use grated yam instead of water. So since then, I always use yam instead of water. But honestly, I've never compared the two recipes. She really doesn't know the difference, but that's what I do. This is extremely Japanese. It shows. It shows a lot. I felt the dungeon meals in Dungeon Messi. I refuse to use the English name. Which seems more, which seems most appealing to you and why? Which is one you'd be least likely to eat? Honestly, I'm a picky eater myself, so I don't think I want to eat any of them. She laughs. But while I'm trying the manga, I think about how fun it would be to eat it if I could. That makes sense. From the manga series, it's obvious you enjoy TTRPGs. Can you tell us about one of your favorite player characters? So, actually, I've never played Dungeons and Dragons. In the world TTRPG, I had learned until I became an adult. But I've seen a lot of, about Dungeons and Dragons, so I bought the player's guide and some of the related novels. So I have the knowledge to some extent, but I've never really played a TTRPG myself. Many such cases. They're not that common in, in Japan, and from what I know, they are quite different. Because they are not tabletop RPGs, they are talking RPGs. I think they like stuff like Call of Cthulhu more than Dungeons and Dragons, which is interesting. If you were to play one, do you know what kind of character you like to play? We played Baldur's Gate 3. I played the Human Rogue. I think that's pretty common for a first character. Dungeon Meshi features a very well constructed ecosystem. How did you construct unique relationships between monsters, for example, the mimic and the treasure bugs? A nice question. When I first thought about what kind of creature a treasure bug was, I wonder if the shape of it would be flat, what it would feed on, and what kind of life it would live. And that's when the idea came to me. Then it was just all my imagination. The monster, how do they move or develop? It's purely based on my imagination. That's actually really impressive. Do you have a similar monster fascination as Lyos? What was the first monster to capture your imagination? So I love monsters, but not at the level of Lyos. But as a kid, I played the game Passage Dragoon, 
and it was attracted to the dragon that the protagonist of the, uh, the first Panzer Dragoon rides. I found it really cool. Dragons are cool, that makes sense to me. Similarly, how did you come up with Laios as perfect master? So when I was little, I drilled the masters and wondered, what kind of master is the strongest, or which one is overpowered? That part of the manga is based on that memory. And here, here it comes. It's time for Clown Town, baby. Not fans had a strong reaction to Laios and Toshiro's confrontation with one another. Quite a few fans on social media seem to relate to Laios' difficulty with reading social cues related to their own experiences on the autism spectrum. Did you envision Laios as autistic when conceiving his character? How could, would you describe the friction between Laios and Toshiro? In my understanding is, Laios is a really normal person, there's nothing special, and everyone can relate to a person like him. I also relate to him. So, I don't think I'm writing anything special regarding Laios. That's why I think people can relate or to or appreciate him. Some people might say Laios is a little bit autistic, but Shuro has his own difficulties. He's just a guy. He's just a normal guy, kind of a goofball. And to be fair, Shuro comes from a different country. So, they're going to socialize in different ways. That's okay. Everyone has their individual problems, it's not just Laios or Shuru. The problems are mutual, we always need to try to understand and learn from each other. Sometimes you might hurt another person, but that's the process we need to understand other people. Absolutely normal. These people are pissing me off now. Oh look at this, this is different! In both the anime and, uh, anime <laughs> and manga adaptations, Where's the series fan service? Fan service? Comes from pics of Senshi's underwear. In the spirit of this, could you describe Senshi's as sex appeal? Said the fan service feels a little off to me. But I have seen people talking about Senshi's sex appeal. The reason I came up with this idea of showing Senshi in his underwear is that when I was little, I used to live in this city where there was an old man hanging his laundry while just wearing his underwear. It's not fun service. It is supposed to be funny. It's about being funny. But you will never understand it. Some people, at least. It was awkward for me. I really didn't want to look at him. But from his perspective, he really didn't care. He didn't care what other people thought. I found that vibe interesting. So, Senshi is the normal type of person who really doesn't care what other people think about him. Lice is probably more like me and feels a little bit awkward looking at other people in just their underwear. But I thought this vibe was really funny and interesting. That's why I drew Senshi that way. Senshi's rather handsome, though, isn't he? He has really nice hair and a full beard. Dwarves are cool. They are cool! Queen never said he's supposed to be handsome, and I don't think he is. Supposed if you find it in the hands of just whatever. I actually thought the Marcel's dress during her Tempest the Dungeon Lord was really appealing. Even though her friends made fun of it. Were there any references for its design? Actually, there's no real life model or reference for the dress. I just combined the clothes that Marcel's model liked, and also combined that with the hood. Which you guys consider a little bit childish, so Marcel's friends are fucking fine in a joking way. But the people around her don't really think her dress is funny or not cool. They're just making fun because the dress is a little bit out of character for Marcel. That makes sense. Did you expect such strong fan reactions to the relationship between Marcel and Falling? When I draw my manga, I try to develop it differently than the fans' expectations. If I care too much about how the fans will react, I think the story might become less fun or interesting. So, I try not to think too much about how readers will react. In general, I just leave the readers' imagination. Like how they read or how they consume my manga. Yeah, I don't think they're, they're actually lesbians. Imagine. Imagine. That happens, eh? That happens. Friends are still a thing. Wow. Regarding the manga's finale. <laughs> Do you envision any sort of spin off following Itsumi's pursuit of the Black Magician? Or will she continue her life as she pleases as a beastman? 
I haven't decided yet, but for now, there's no plan to make the spin off. But is it Sumi might want to pursue and find the Black Magician and sort of beat him? But she might just live her life as she does. You know, she's like a fully free person. So she might just live her life as she likes. Oh, then Jumbish. Oh, they're absolutely gay, right? No. Oh, that's absolutely for Cyrus, right? No. He's autistic, right? No. They think. But all that makes sense. It doesn't. You cannot. You cannot be. You cannot be that ranged. They will tell you. To Japan. Oh, Japan. So bad in Japan. It's so bad in Japan. They're against all of these rainbow stuff. They are. <laughs> how to say this, right? They're really backwards. But every time, every time they see a Japanese work, look at that! Look at that! Representation! Oh, mm, so good! No. It's either not representation or a joke. But they're so delusional. They're so delusional. They will take, they will try to take anything. It's a W and just run with it. It's so bad. And you know what? This Ryoko Kui seems like a pretty normal person. I like the new fans. Or dare I say, the modern audience. <laughs>